uh, alternate number three, what comments were made to him by juror number 12. So I talked about this with counsel in chambers, and it's something we absolutely need to explore. I understand the jury is wondering if they're going to be able to leave by 430. It's now 423, and I've always told them that they can leave at 430 every day because some people might have child care issues and so forth. Mr. Carlos? Yeah, Your Honor, and, and just we, on further discussion with uh, counsel here, as far as uh, the defense uh, is, is concerned, the jury has indicated that they are deadlocked. It is our request that you uh, talk to the jury now and uh, accept their finding that the jury is de that the jury is deadlocked today. All right. Well, that's different from what we discussed in chambers. Yeah, we just had a discussion here, and uh, and it's on behalf of Mr. Winslow. We don't want to waive anything, so it's our request that uh, the deadlock be taken now. All right. Well, that that requires substantial inquiry of the court before the court declares a mistrial because they're deadlocked, but. We have three guilty verdicts that juror number 12 participated in. The court has an absolute duty to inquire as to whether there's any misconduct on the part of juror number 12 in reaching those guilty verdicts because your client's rights are at stake here. And if there was some misconduct by juror number 12 that resulted in any guilty verdict for Mr. Winslow, the court has an absolute obligation to inquire. Is it your request the court not inquire? But the jury is deadlocked at this point. Okay. Well, we're dealing with a couple of different issues. Right. We're talking if there's misconduct, there's misconduct, and the court can the court can do something with the misconduct later. But how, at this point, this jury cannot make a decision. This jury that's here for the court cannot make a decision as to the counts that it has before it. Okay. All right. Well, the court absolutely will inquire. And my understanding is alternate juror number three is here. What we discussed in chambers, I was going to read CalCrim 3551 regarding further deliberations to the jury and send them home overnight while we address the issue of juror number 12, because this is not something I want to rush through with five minutes remaining to go. They've been at it for five days. We summoned our first jurors here on this trial one month ago, and I'm not going to make a hasty decision in one or two minutes without conferring with counsel. So let's do this. Let's bring alternate juror number three in at this time. And we'll seat him in the jury box. All right. You can go ahead and sit in the front row in the middle if you want, so you're a little bit closer. All right. And uh, so alternate, it is alternate juror number three, correct? Okay. Uh, my understanding is that uh, when the clerk called you to tell you that the jury has uh, declared that they may be deadlocked. You had made a comment to her uh, regarding juror number 12 that questioned or caused you to question whether he should be a juror on this case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Can you please uh, tell the court what exactly it was that he said to you and when it was said? Was it today? No, it was uh, just before the, um, the trial went to jury. Uh, we were outside. Uh, the courthouse out in front and we were conversing and I gave him my business card and said hey if you ever need help buying a big screen TV I'm the guy to call and he said oh I just bought one uh, like a week ago and I said oh cool what'd you buy and he went and he suddenly got very very like oh I uh, I I said ass now wait a minute it, uh, uh, my memory is so bad. Just like that, and I went, whoa, I don't know if I'd want this guy on a jury. I mean, he, it just jolted me to the court, just the way he said it. It was like, oh, I'm having a senior moment. He had this real struggle in his face, and he went, my memory is so bad. And I was like, wow. I just, and I'm just telling you this because you said anywhere along the line, anything that seems that it might affect the trial in a negative way, we should report it to you. And obviously, you're the authority on all of this, but I just thought the court should hear it. I didn't want to have uh, uh, this entire case be thrown off and have it be on my conscience that I didn't speak up and at least say, say what I knew. Okay. And that, I'm saying this under oath. Okay. And you, for just to describe for the record, when you were describing his description of the big screen TV, he was very animated and grabbing his face and yeah, looking. His face, he just, it was like he was uh, like trying to remember uh, uh, the creation story or something. I was just like, easy, man. I was asking what kind of TV you got. But it really, the way it rattled him, rattled me. 
Okay, so it caused it has caused you to have concern about his memory, short term or long term or both. You name it. Okay. I, I, my my biggest thing was, can this guy even remember all his testimony? Because right. I took two notebooks of and, and I could see over his shoulder he was chicken scrolling. I, I don't know what he was writing. So. Okay. Uh, did you have any other discussions with juror number twelve during the course of the trial, or any other time that would cause you concern about his ability to fulfill his duties as a juror? Well. It's true as we conversed in the hall and all got pretty familiar with each other on a sort of a friendly basis. And he was a, as genial as anybody else, but the way he joined in conversation was a little odd because he does have a foreign accent. I can tell English is not his first language. And uh, not per se, but in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, well, I, I know all these other people. I, they're all really cool. This one guy is kind of, I don't know. I'm just to figure it out. And the other day when he made that remark, I, I, I just, in my heart of hearts, I went, man, I don't know if I should tell the judge now or not, because I, I, the trial was still in progress. Okay. So I'm doing this out of abundance of caution to do my civic duty and to all of the work that went into this trial. I'm, okay. I, I'm not, it's not lost on me how much money and time and effort has gone into this. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that the court was aware that that incident happened to me. What you make of it? That's up to you. I don't know. This is highly unusual. This is the last place I expected to be when I answered my jury summons. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate your coming forward with that information. Uh, Mr. Owens, you want the court to inquire? No, Your Honor. Uh, the defense? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and send you home. Okay. Uh, and again, you are still under the same admonition. Don't discuss the case with anybody or form or express any opinions because the case is still ongoing. Okay. okay. And I want to thank you again okay. for coming forward with that information. All right. Uh, they're going to come back now, but uh, I'm probably going to have them Should deliberate. The <laughs> Pardon me? Should I leave the building? You can leave the building. I may. Thank and you. we will be in touch with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming in again. Thank all of you. All right, the record reflected alternate juror number three has left the courtroom. Mr. Owens, do you want to be heard with respect to anything he said? No, Your Honor, other than just to say that clearly the comment that was made had nothing to do with the evidence in the case or anything to do with the deliberative process. So the people are asking that the court make no findings whatsoever as it relates to the uh, prior verdicts that have been returned. All right, what about the defense? Is the defense asking the court to inquire of juror number 12? Oh, yeah. All right, it, it seems like it was just a, a situation where he couldn't remember what kind of TV set he bought. Here's what I plan on doing. I want to bring the jurors back in. I'll instruct them pursuant to 3551. We'll bring them back in tomorrow. I have considered uh, other options, including further instruction, further readback, and the possibility of allowing each side to make a closing argument again. But the case law has suggested there has to be some focused area of concern that the jury is, is hung up on. And I don't have that yet. So we just can't reopen it and have you argue the entire case. But I'm going to send them home, have them deliberate again tomorrow, and if there's a note that comes out at that point, I will explore the possibility of reopening or further instruction or further readback. Do you have any objection to that procedure, Mr. Owens? I don't have an objection to the court's uh, proposed procedure. What I would ask the court to do during the colloquy back and forth with the foreperson is to propose the possibility that if there is a legal issue that needs to be resolved, to identify it, and the court can then potentially allow either clarifying instructions or further argument of counsel in order to assist them in resolving the issue. All right, Mr. Carlos. Yeah, since they can't they, they can't deliberate without being all together, <clears throat> taking it home tomorrow, taking it home tonight doesn't do them any good. They've they've indicated that they cannot reach a verdict, that they are deadlocked. Deadlock is the word that they use. It's our request that the court can to take that uh, that finding from the jury now. Right, I understand and. The, the typical questioning of a deadlock jury, especially in a case of this magnitude, will take at least 20 minutes. And we're, they're already asking if they can leave because they want to leave at 4.30. So I have no problem with having them come back tomorrow given the amount of time that they've invested. So I'm going to read the instruction to them and we can, I, I'm not opposed to declaring them hopelessly deadlock and declaring a mistrial. I don't want to do it now. I want to give them the opportunity to go home and sleep on it think about it and come back tomorrow morning and see where we stand at that time. Is there any objection to that, Mr. Owens? No. Mr. Carlos? Yes. Okay, what's the legal objection? The legal objection is they've, just, they've said they're deadlocked and they've written a note that said they're deadlocked and Mr. 
Mr. Winslow is on trial here, and, and I think it's his right to have that deadlock declared now. Okay. All right. Well, over the defense objection, the court will employ the procedure as indicated, and uh, we'll go ahead and bring in the jury now. Can you have, uh, can you get Manny to bring him in? And you're right, can the, the, the court admonish, because it will be a lot of press as a result of the partial reading of the verdicts today, so we can admonish them certainly not to listen to the radio, watch TV, anything of that nature. All right, I will do so. All right, let's bring him in. Okay. All right, the record reflect the presence of all 12 jurors. I apologize for the delay. We, we had to deal with an issue before you came. I know we're slightly after 4.30, uh, but I did receive a note from the fourth person that indicates we remain deadlocked on all remaining charges. Is that correct, juror number six? Yes. All right, here's what I want to do. I'm going to read another jury instruction to you. There are a number of things the court can do when a jury is declares that they are deadlocked. Uh, this includes uh, giving additional instructions, clarifying previous instructions, permitting the attorneys to make additional closing arguments if there's an area of inquiry that the, the jury feels would be helpful or any combination of those three remedies. So I want you to go home tonight. I want you to come back tomorrow at nine o'clock. And I know this is not the news you wanna hear, but look, I know all 12 of you have invested a lot of time and effort in this trial. There's no question you've given up a lot to be here, and I know that. You've taken time away from your families, you've taken time away from your jobs, and I know that you all take this very seriously, and I can tell based on the length of deliberations and how well you paid attention during the course of the trial. So I'm gonna send you home tonight, but I want you to think about if there's anything possible the court can do in terms of focusing uh, an area of law that might need clarification or a further argument from counsel might be helpful or if you need additional instruction or read back. Sometimes juries that have, sometimes juries that have difficulty reaching a verdict are able to resume deliberations and successfully reach a verdict on one or more of the counts. So please consider the following suggestions. Do not hesitate to re-examine your own views. Fair and effective jury deliberations require a frank and forthright exchange of views. Each of you must decide the case for yourself and form your individual opinion after you have fully and completely considered all of the evidence with your fellow jurors. It is your duty as jurors to deliberate with the goal of reaching a verdict if you can do so without surrendering your individual judgment. Do not change your position just because it differs from that of other jurors or just because you or others want to reach a verdict. Both the people and the defendant are entitled to the individual judgment of each juror. It is up to you to decide how to conduct your deliberations. You may want to consider new approaches in order to get a fresh perspective. That's why I want you to go home and sleep on tonight and give it additional thought. Let me know whether I can do anything to help you further, such as give additional instructions, or clarify instructions I have already given you. Please continue your deliberations tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. If you wish to communicate with me further, please do so in writing using the forms that you have available to you in the jury room. So I'm gonna just excuse you for the night 
and order you back tomorrow morning to resume your deliberations at 9 o'clock. So we'll see everybody back here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Do you have your personal belongings in the jury room, or do you? Oh, so you can leave now? You want to go out the front door here? Okay, and I want to, I want to, emp I'm, I'm, I do want to emphasize, as you know, the media coverage in this case has been extensive, just based on the testimony. It will be very uh, extensive tonight, given your findings on four of the charges. Please be extra diligent and not watching any TV accounts or reading or looking at any news source from any area, whether it's the internet, print, TV, radio, what have you. Be extra diligent tonight. And again, I want to thank you very much for your considered effort in this case. And we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Have a good evening. All right, the record reflect the uh, jurors have left the courtroom. Do you have anything else you want to add, Mr. Owens? Mr. Carlos? Diana. All right, I expect we might hear back from them sometime tomorrow morning, so hopefully everybody will be close by. All right, we're in